Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Douglas Harriot. I'm from the University of Wollongong, a computer science student. Um, I've got some experience making a few little Mac and iPhone apps. Um, and today I'm going to talk about creating custom controls from scratch. So what is this? Why am I talking about this? Apple provides lots of different standard controls we can use to build our apps. Um, but they're not very exciting. You kind of make windows that look like this with checkboxes and sliders and nothing too exciting. Um, you build calculators, they're exciting. <laughs> um, if you want to do anything more interesting, you really have to know um, how all these graphic stuff work. Um, even something simple like this calculator is still custom stuff. So that the green view at the top, that's made up of lots of separate images. If you want to make more interesting things like colander, um, it's entirely custom. It's, I mean, it's hardly any standard controls in that whole window. Um, and when you move on to stuff like Aperture and Final Cut Pro, it's all completely custom. There's, um, you really have to know, have to have a good understanding of how this stuff works to be able to create experiences like this. Um, as James was talking about this morning in his app Procreate, um, it's all custom. Um, that how it, it's not just how it looks, but it's also how it works. And to make uh, like the sliders and the buttons all work um, in a way that makes sense, um, it really takes effort. So how do we go about this? Let's start off with some history. Um, it's useful to understand how we got to where we are now. So back in the days of Mac OS 9, um, the whole screen was drawn into a single buffer of memory. So when you've got two windows on top of each other, um, it's drawing on top of the other window and you've lost it. It's the same way Windows XP works. Um, Windows does up to XP. Um, so when you drag a window around, just to redraw what's underneath it as well. So if your CPU gets locked up, um, things start to look like this, <laughs> which we don't like, um, except sometimes we do want that. <laughs> so um, in Mac OS X, Apple fixed that problem by creating a new compositing window manager that composites each window into a separate buffer. Um, so it looks more like this today. Um, so the, because each window gets its own separate buffer, it's pretty much like a computer, it's the same technology that's used to render computer games. That's how like expose and mission control and everything works. Each window is completely separate, you can fly around, you can see what's behind each window. Even when the windows are off the side of the screen, they're still being drawn into the graphics cards. You can still keep, take screenshots of windows that are off the screen. Um, and it makes all this cool stuff possible. Um, and Windows, uh, Microsoft copied this as well from Windows Vista, and they show it off a little bit more than Apple does. Um, so let's start talking about how we go about this ourselves. We're going to mostly focus on Mac OS X, because that's where the interesting history is. Um, and we'll get to iOS a bit later. So an easy starting point is NS Window. Um, it's not too exciting. There's a few different types of windows you can make. You've got standard windows, textured windows. You can also make borderless windows. Um, and transparent windows if you want to make completely custom shape windows. Um, the most interesting stuff we're going to talk about is NS View. Um, UI view is very similar, but a bit different. We'll get to that later. So a uh, window has a content view. Um, you're probably familiar with this, how views have a hierarchy. So in a window like this, you've got a content view and then sub views inside it, which then have their own sub views. And the views are drawn recursively. Um, when, if we want to create our own custom views, um, we want to subclass NSView, which is a method called drawRect. So let's jump right in and have a bit of a play with this and see how it works. So, make this exciting. Let's open up a new Xcode project, because um, that's always fun to do in live presentations. So, here it is. Make a new Cocoa Mac app, uh, draw rect. Good. Put it there. Uh, <laughs> so, if we run this, you'll see we get a nice boring window. Um, now, so let's create a custom 
NSU subclass. So we go make a new file, call it DSD view subclass of NSU. You can go there. And you'll see in the template Apple gives us, we've got our init method like normal, and we've got this draw rec method down the bottom where we can put our own drawing code. So let's write some code in here. Um, So as a really simple example, uh, let's, let's make a color we want to pick. So NS color has a um, method called color. You can make colors with RGB or hue saturation brightness or just grays. Let's make, I like using HSB. Uh, let's pick a random color. Um, there we go. And there's a method called NS rect fill which we can use to fill in a rect with that color. So a few things to note here. Um, I skipped over. When you pick a color, there's a method called set fill, um, which sets the state. Um, so when the next time you draw shape, it'll use that color to fill it in. You notice here our draw rect method, it's got, it takes a parameter, um, which it names dirty rect. This is the rectangle that needs to be redrawn. Um, and we'll, you'll see why, what that is in a second. To make our view actually appear on screen, uh, we'll open up our interface builder and let's add in a new NS view. And if we set the, custom, the class to DHD view, it should appear on screen. Um, one last thing to do. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to turn off auto layout because um, you'll break some of the things I want to show you. So if we run this program, we'll see we get a view with a color that it chose randomly. Um, and we can resize the window and it, just, it stays the same. So it means it's not redrawing when re it's not redrawing at 60 frames a second or whatever. It only redraws when it needs to. We want to minimize the amount of drawing that we do because drawing can be expensive. Especially if you want to make things animate um, and be really smooth, you don't want it to be redrawing. Um, so notice here, if I shrink the window, it still doesn't redraw. But once the window shrunk, it's thrown away all the stuff that's been covered up. So now I expand the window out, it's going to redraw just those portions of it. So it looks something like that. So you'll see for each frame where the window is getting bigger, it will redraw just that little bit. Um, and AppKit tries to be clever and really minimize the bit that's dirty that has to be redrawn. Um, so it's fun to play with, you get pretty colors. Um, some other interesting things to note, what happens if we put things on top of this view? So let's say add in a slider, because they're kind of fun, and a button. You know, these funny colors around it. You'll notice every, if we drag and move these sliders around, they redraw every time they move. Because remember, each window just has a single buffer of memory to draw into. And if we hit this button, um, it'll even change colors around it. So that's not very good. And we'll get to in a second how to fix that. So, if we go back to presentation, what about when we're making things more complicated? Like, how might NS table view work? What if you've got a thousand rows of data? Do we make hundreds of subviews? Do we make like a subview for each row, or and then a subview for each column? Um, what, if you've got like a million rows of data, do you create a, hunt, a million views? Um, no, that's a bad idea. That's not how you want to do it. Um, especially in earlier versions of Mac OS X, views were very expensive. So Apple uh, made things more complicated, unfortunately, by trying to avoid having too many views. They introduced this thing that's slightly annoying uh, called NS cell, um, which is used by NSView to perform drawing. So NS cell itself is not a view. 
are simply used by views to perform drawing. So we've got our draw rack method on NSView. NSCell has a similar method called draw with frame in view. So a view can call us, can tell a cell to draw itself um, within a view. So in a table, you just have one cell for each column, and that same cell can be used to draw itself multiple times as needed. Because um, you don't want to be creating a million different objects. Um, what about some other interesting issues that come up, like scrolling? If we're going to redraw every time something moves, how do you handle scrolling? Do you have to like redo the, redraw the whole thing? Um, Apple kind of came up with some little hacks, basically. Um, and then a scroll view has a copies on scroll property you can change. Um, so rather than redrawing the whole thing each time, it'll copy it up and then just redraw the bit it needs to. So in our example here, uh, say we add in a scroll view. That is this one. And then I'll put that inside it. And do that again. You see here that if I scroll up and down, it, it copies it. So it doesn't redraw the whole thing each time. It, only, it copies it up and just redraws the bits on the edge that it needs to. So. Back uh, when it used to work like this, uh, it's not very efficient. So how do we fix all this? Because all this redrawing is not a very good idea. Um, in Apple introduced a technology called core animation um, in OS X 10.5, um, which introduces the concept of layers. So rather than each window getting its own buffer of memory to draw into, you can create your own layers um, within a window that also have their own buffer of memory. So in our example, say we've got our window that looks like this, rather than the whole window just sharing one buffer of memory to draw into, they can separate into separate layers. So the background can draw itself separately from the controls on the top. Now, there's a few ways to do this. Um, Interface Builder has a checkbox um, you can tick, and so if I do that now, um, you can choose where um, which views should be layer backed. It, if you set a view to be layer backed, that's what it's called. When um, all sub views also automatically become layer backed. So if I pick this view here, is the Windows root content view, all the sub views now become layer backed. So if I run this again now, you'll see scrolling. It doesn't redraw. Um, when I drag these sliders around, um, the background doesn't have to redraw because they're all in separate layers now. Um, so you want to be using separate layers wherever you've got things that move around and potentially need redrawing. Um, you can also do this on code. In code, there's more than just the button. Um, there's, a f um, there's a few different ways to do it. It gets complicated. Unfortunately, Apple has this concept of layer-backed views and layer hosting views. Um, unfortunately, the difference is this one line of code here. Um, if you call set once layer on its own, AppKit will create its own layer that can be used to back the view. If you want to be able to play with the layer yourself, um, you want to create a la layer hosting view, you just have to make sure that you create the layer yourself before you tell it to turn on layer backing. Um, CLA has a few properties that are pretty cool. I'll introduce in a second. Um, if you use a layer backed view, you're not, you do not touch the layer yourself. It's just kind of an implementation detail that you should not touch. If you want to do more interesting things with layers, you want to create a layer hosting view um, where you create your own layer, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So some of these properties layers have. Uh, layers have a few properties we can use to draw our interfaces more efficiently. Um, so a simple layer, you can set a background color on. Um, then you've also got more interesting things like corner radius. So if you want to make rounded corners, you can set the corner radius property of your layer, and then you don't have to draw any rounded corners yourself. It'll sort it all out for you. You can also add in borders with different colors and weights. Um, shadows, that's a really nice, efficient way of drawing shadows. Um, and because it's all separate layers, the shadows don't have to redraw what's underneath it. 
Um, you can also add an image um, as content of the layer. Um, so if you've got like a custom button design, you can add your own image in the button. Um, and as well as just standard CA layers, there's lots of other subclasses of CA layer Apple provides. So for example, the CA gradient layer, you can use to draw gradients. And all this is drawn on the graphics card very, very efficiently. So if possible, you want to be using these layers um, for your uh, yeah, for your interface. The differences on iOS, um, it's much, much nicer. Um, all views are layer-backed. Um, there's no such thing as non-layer-backed views. So that demo earlier where you can see the slide is redrawing the colors underneath, you can't do that on iOS because everything's layer-backed automatically. Um, the other important difference, there's no distinction between layer hosting and layer-backed views. Um, so all views on iOS have a layer and you're allowed to play with that layer as much as you want. Um, UIKit won't override properties. Um, so iOS makes it really, really easy to play with this stuff. So a few other things to note. Um, I started off talking about NS Window briefly. Um, iOS does actually have windows as well. Um, they don't appear on your screen in the same way. So if you've got an interface like this, you'll see the keyboard actually has its own window, I think. This is all kind of guessing, because Apple doesn't, I'm not sure if it's documented, but I think keyboard has its own window, so it always appears above your app. Um, the status bar has its own window, and then your app has its own window. And I think you can, um, you can if you want, you can actually create your own windows, multiple windows within your app. If you want to create your own thing on top of the status bar or other progress bars, you can do them in separate windows where appropriate. Um, as a little side note, if you like kind of touch your uh, finger down in a search field to get the little magnification popping up, um, you can kind of see there's like a white bar where the status bar should be. I'm guessing, I'm not sure, I'm guessing it's because it's in a separate window. Um, as a little side note. How does iOS handle table views? It's, m again, much, much nicer than how OS X handles it. Um, each cell gets its own view, and all these views are layer-backed. And rather than creating a million different views, if you've got a million rows, it reuses these views in a queue. So it only creates views for what's on screen. And when they move off screen, uh, they go into a queue to be reused later. So it's still very efficient. Um, in OS X 10.7, um, also supports uh, view-based table views, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, some other things you need to think about if you start adding all these layers, you have to think about performance a little bit. This is especially important on iOS. Um, so to look at some of these issues, instruments is really helpful. Um, there's a core animation instrument you can use to investigate this. Um, it's got a little option on the side to turn on color blended layers. So it means when you pull your iPhone out and turn on color blended layers, it'll look something like this. It'll draw a red transparent rectangle around each separate layer. Um, and green rectangles around opaque layers. So if you've got too many transparent layers like on the home screen, it all appears red. So you can see that's using uh, a lot of GPU power to composite all those layers. Um, another app, so say like the App Store, it's all green, it's all opaque. Um, so it's much more efficient. So if you're making uh, custom table view cells on iOS, um, and you put all these views inside it, like all these text fields, I think by default they might be transparent if you're not careful, and it'll show up with lots of red, which you don't want. Um, so if you're having, as a side note, if you're having performance issues with your table views, um, you want, might want to make sure it's opaque. And this is a really helpful tool to see um, what's going on. So, yeah, unfortunately OSX still has um, old style table views, and it still has NSL, which we have to deal with. Um, however, yeah, Apple now recommends using views and layers as much as possible. As well as you want to get um, to using like Retina Display Max with huge numbers of pixels, it's heaps more efficient to use separate layers and, and using these CA layer properties um, instead of drawing it on the CPU. And yeah, as I said, there's now view based table views in OS X. So, I'm gonna, for the rest of the presentation, I'm going to go over a bit of a demo um, showing what it would be like to make some 
custom slider controls. So I'll show you when I prepared earlier that we're going to create uh, something kind of like this. So here's some custom sliders I've designed. Um, so if we click on them, they animate, nice. You can drag them around. Um, so you might use something like this. Um, one of my apps I have on the App Store um, for Mac is called DM Assistant for controlling lighting systems. And in this case, it makes sense to have nice big sliders that light up and change colors. So it's just an example of uh, one case where you might need some uh, custom controls. So let's make a new Xcode project and start building some sliders. And you'll see lots of different issues come up along the way. And then we can talk about the best way to go about uh, these things that come up. So there you get another new Xcode project. Call it sliders. And so if we run it again, we get our boring window. So start with, we'll make a new uh, subclass. Um, this time we're going to subclass NS control. Um, NS control is a subclass of NS view. As you can see here, um, it's an image subclass. It's a subclass of NS Responder. Um, NS Control, it's basically just an NS view with a few other little extra things that make it um, easier. Um, but you won't notice that too much in this demo. So I can go there. Now let's add it on our screen. So make a new NS view. Make it look like this. And also, it's class to be DSG slider. Um, I am using auto layout this time. I'll set constraint on the width. Um, you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, so if we run this, you'll see it does nothing. So we haven't written any interesting code yet. So. Start with, we're going to call, we want to make this other, oh, something else I've got to mention. So there's the, the distinction between layer backed and layer hosting views. Um, in OS X 10.8, um, Apple introduced, uh, Apple changed it so now if you want, you can modify the layers of layer backed views using a new method called update layer. So if in our NSU subclass, uh, we can override wants update layer, and if we return yes, um, AppKit will now call a method called update layer instead. Um, so we can actually delete our draw rec method. Because um, if we want it to be nice and efficient, we want to avoid drawing as much as possible. So we've got once update layer returning yes, which is good. Um, now, if you want to make me do our standard self once layer, tell it to be layer backed. Um, no, that's not the right one. Once layer, yep. Now, so now, now because it's using update layer, I can, we can override here our update layer. Method and say self dot layer dot background color equals this color make it green um, and note that layers um, take core graphics um, colors not NS colors so if we run that we should now see a green rectangle appear and this does not use draw rect it's drawn in its own layer um, and it doesn't have to be read when we resize the window, nothing gets redrawn. Um, it's simply the graphics card um, compositing a green layer. Um, the next thing we want, we want to create, I'll we'll call it the thumb of the slider that we drag around. So 
um, I'll make a class extension and add a property. So we can create it here. Thumb equals CA layer. And we can go self dot layer, add sub layer. So layers have a hierarchy in a similar way to views do. So you can have layers, layers can have sub layers, which can have sub layers. Um, you can go on and on. So we'll add that. So. And then another method we want to override is um, layout. Um, and layout will be called, um, we can use layout to lay out our view. And again, sort of like drawing, we want to avoid having to do this as much as possible. So there's um, a method called set needs layout. Um, so on the next, before it draws the next frame, it'll relay out the view. Um, and another one, um, I can demonstrate back in our other example um, with our random draw rect here. Um, if we override mouse, if you want to handle events, um, which we'll go into more detail later, um, it says on it, when the view receives a mouse down, if we set needs display, that'll actually re it'll call our draw rate method again um, before the next frame. So in our layout, with our slider, let's you have to make sure you call super, otherwise things will break. And we want to tell the thumb where it should be positioned. So we use um, NS size to represent sizes of objects. Um, and you'll see it's a type def for a struct, um, which has a width and a height. So the size can be make size so bounds dot. So make the thumb the width of our view. So if you want to get the size of a view, there's the bounds property. Um, and there's also the frame property, which is a bit different. Um, bounds is always, the origin is always at zero, but frame is its position within its super view. Um, and we'll make, we'll make it square. So like, we'll make our thumb square. So its width and the height can both be the same as our view's width. So, And we, if you want to tell this thumb where to go, it needs a rect. And the thumb rect dot size. Um, NS rect has a size and a point. So we want its size to be thumb size. And its x coordinate can be 0. And for now, I'll just set its y coordinate to be zero. And one last step, if we self.thumb.frame can be thumb thumb reach. What have I done wrong? Oh, and the other thing you have to remember, if you're playing with if you want to use these um, CA layer properties, we have to make sure we link against uh, the quartz core. Uh, framework. So we can add that into our project there and import it. Quartz core. Um, so I haven't done, oh, and we can't see our thumb because I haven't given it a color or anything yet. So let's go self dot thumb dot background color can be red. So, so we now have starts of a slide. We've got our view which has which layer has a green background 
and the thumb has a red background. So a few things to think about. Um, people tweeting me questions. It's okay. I got it. Okay. So we want this slider to have a value property. Um, so we need to store its position somewhere. So let's make a new property. Um, it can be a double, and we'll call it double value. And so at the start, we'll just set its double value to be um, some number. That will change later. To work out the, so now we need to write code in our layout method to tell it where to put our thumb. So we have to do a bit of maths. You can go self dot bounds dot size dot height. Um, we we'll get the height of our view. And if you multiply it by uh, double value, um, almost work. We we'll, we want to subtract from the side the size. Um, in this case, the height of the thumb itself. Um, otherwise, it'll start overlapping. Um, self. There we go. So, starting to sort of look like a slider. We'll get back to the, we'll make it look more prettier at the end once we get it kind of working. Um, the one more thing we need to do, you can't click on it yet. So, we have to talk about how do we handle events. Um, if you look up the x documentation, um, by the way, x documentation is very good and you'll be looking at it a lot. <laughs> um, there's this, do you remember NS control was a subclass of NS view, which is a subclass of NS responder. Um, NS responder is where we get all these, all these methods from for handling events. Um, so you see somewhere, if we want to respond to mouse events, there's these method, methods that we can override. Um, if you're on iOS and you want to respond to touch events, um, if you look up UI responder, I think it is, um, you'll see, I spelled it wrong, no I didn't. Um, if you want to respond to touch events, um, there's these touches began, touches moved, touches ended, and touches cancelled. You can override. So we want to respond to the mouse. So let's override mouse down. So we need to make this work. We need to kind of record where you first clicked so we can calculate how far it's moved when it gets dragged. And we need to record that it is clicked so we can make it the view light up. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to make some more properties. Um, they be private. Make a bool called active. We can store if it's clicked. We'll make an NS rect to store the location of where it was clicked. And we'll make um, another one to store the value it was previously. So if we set these things, click um, self dot click location. Um, to get the location out, um, there's this NS event object that gets passed in. So if we have a look at NS event, you'll see um, there's a whole bunch of properties we can use um, to get uh, like the timestamp. You can get what keys are pressed down on the keyboard. Um, um, to get the mouse location, it's actually a class method. Um, CD rect. Ah, that needs to be a point. Yeah, so for some reason, mouse location is a class method, not actually an instance method of this event. Um, and um, click double value. Um, we'll just save our current value. Uh, 
There we go. Now to make it actually respond to moving the mouse, we want to override our mouse move, our mouse drag. So <coughs> it's going to take a little bit of maths. So you want to work out the difference between how far we've dragged it. Um, Equals, yes, uh, that's the wrong button. And I need self and all that. Um, and we need to work out the new value for our slider. Plus diff over self dot bounds dot size dot height. Minus self dot thumb dot size uh, dot frame dot size dot height. And then if we set our new value. So that will now, when we drag the mouse around, it will change the value. However, it doesn't relay out because um, we don't. We haven't told it to lay out yet. So I'm going to override um, set double value um, to say every time we change the value, we want to set needs layout to yes. Um, and before that works, I need to make that non atomic. Um, that's beside the point. So now, when I drag this around, it should move. Yes, there we go. However, it's kind of moving a bit weirdly, isn't it? It kind of like follows the mouse around. Because, um, well, notice the framework we're using is called core animation. The whole point of it is really animation. Um, it's slightly annoying. It's got a thing, it's got implicit animations built in. So every time you change the frame of a CA layer, it will animate automatically. Every time you change the background color or most other properties will animate automatically. So we need to turn that off somehow because we don't want it when we're dragging the mouse around. Uh, we can use um, a class called CA transaction to control how uh, changes are made to CA layer properties. So I'll tell it to begin a transaction. Uh, so now we can set some properties. We want to set, uh, we want to disable actions. Um, we'll do it because kind of the way implicit animations are implemented under the hood um, is there an action that gets fired in response to a value changing. Um, you can use CA transaction commit. The other benefit of using a CA transaction is all these changes will happen at once. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. But if you had multiple views you want to move around in sync, um, you can put them all within a single CA transaction and they all happen together. So now, um, when we run this, you'll see it doesn't try and be clever and animate it for us. It now moves smoothly with the mouse. So that, that's a pretty good slider we've got going. But it's not very pretty yet. So you need to add images um, to these layers to make it look like a slider. <coughs> um, to do that, we're going to use um, a thing called 9 slice scaling. Um, so, what happens if we want? It's really, what if we want? How do we handle the view resizing? So, what happens if we want to make it longer or shorter or fatter? Um, if we just put in an image that's a single size, um, how should it be resized? Should we just stretch the image? Um, you probably don't want to just stretch the image. So, if you've got something like that as the thumb of your slider, where you've got corners um, with a set border width. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you probably don't want to stretch the border. And you don't want to stretch the corners. Um, you just want to stretch the bits in the middle. So with nine slice scaling, it kind of splits it up into imaginary grid, a three by three grid. So when we resize it, um, what happened? The point is when we resize it, um, it only resizes the bits in the middle. The corners and the borders um, don't get stretched. 
So, um, so if you want to set the an image, uh, we want to set the contents property of our layer. So, in our init, we can go self dot layer dot contents um, equals an image. Um, now, so you could uh, produce a PNG file in something like Photoshop. Um, which is a fairly common way of doing it. That's how Apple does it a lot. But what happens if you want to have different colors or different sizes? Or did, um, so for example, in, yeah, in my app DMX assistant, it needs to change color dynamically. I can't just have it in an image. So often a nice way of doing it is to use code to draw the image um, itself. Um, so kind of like I did earlier in draw rect, how I called NS rect fill. It's effectively drawing an image um, in 10.8 and I can't remember if it's iOS 5 or 6, possibly 6, um, there's a new uh, class method on NS image um, called draw, no, let's look up what it is, um, image with, image with um, size and a drawing handler. So, um, let's see, make size. So we'll say, let's make this image for our slider always 20 by 20 pixels. Um, flipped, I haven't discussed. Um, flipped changes where the, how the coordinate system is oriented. So um, there's another difference between Mac and iOS. On Mac OS X, the coordinate system traditionally been in the bottom left corner. Um, on iOS, it's flipped so it starts on the top right, top left corner, um, which can cause a bit of a pain. So if you're trying to write some drawing code and you find everything's drawing upside down, um, you're probably doing your maths wrong in the coordinate system. So make it not flipped. Inside here, um, we pass in a block, um, which we can use to draw things. Um, and we return um, success from it. So, if we want to draw a rounded rectangle, um, there's a class called NS Bezier Path, um, which can store um, Bezier Path, which are commonly used um, programs like Adobe Illustrator and PDF files themselves are built using these things called Bezier Paths. Um, we'll call it Bezier Path. And it's got a nice constructor to draw a rounded rect for us. Um, so, let's make the corners. Um, five pixel radius, um, and the rect can be our 20 pixel rect. And we want to make it draw, so we want to draw the outline and the fill, so I'll make it color, so make it gray. Um, color on. Now we can tell the path to fill and it will fill itself in. So now when we run this, we haven't set up our scaling properly yet. So you'll see it's drawn this grey rounded rectangle image and stretched it really ugly. So, and the green background color is still there. So to fix that, let's get rid of the green background, which is in update layer. And we'll set the content center property to tell it um, which bits should be scaled. So um, we pass it a rect. This says 50% um, of the way through the image will be the middle, and the center bit is almost infinitely small. So it won't. So it won't. It will only resize this infinitely small bit in the middle. So now when we run this, we've got, um, probably hard to see on the projector, we've got a grey background. So if I make this a different colour, um, it's a bit darker, um, you can see we've got our track now with our rounded corners.
Um, so this is actually quite interesting. By using this new NS image um, API, um, it's really efficient. So we've actually only drawn an image 20 by 20 pixels. Um, so if this was drawn the traditional way, our slide is 100 pixels tall, it would use up huge amounts of more memory. Um, so this is much more memory efficient. Um, additionally, if you've got multiple sliders, um, it only draws this image once. Um, so if you've got 10 sliders on your screen, it's only using up the memory of one of them. And it can share the same image across them all. Um, yet another benefit of using this NS image uh, for drawing um, is if you've got a Retina Play Mac and with two screens plugged in, um, say one that's not Retina, and you drag the window between the Retina screen and the normal screen, it'll actually redraw itself automatically at the lower resolution for you. Um, so this new NS image API is very cool. Um, we're running out of time, so I'll have to skip through a bit. I'll copy and paste some code I wrote earlier to draw a nice image in our thumb. Um, and I have to add in, um, I use an, an inner shadow, um, which isn't included, uh, Apple hasn't provided code for, so I use this open source code, um, which I'll post a link to later to draw in an inner shadow. Um, if I include that. So you see in my thumb contents, I draw um, a path, I create a path. Um, we use NS gradient to create a gradient. Um, I then use an NS shadow um, and that um, class extension uh, category on and a species path to draw the inner shadow, and then I also draw a border. Um, so if we run this now, you'll see we've got a much prettier uh, thumb. One last thing we can do, um, if we want to make the background color change when we mouse down, uh, we can say self uh, set needs Oh, I've forgotten what it is. Um, set needs display. Um, it'll call once update our update layer method again when we mouse down, and it'll have it mouse up. Call that again say active to no on mouse up. So now in update layer, you can say if active, uh, we'll make it that background color, else um, a different background color. Um, see this is pretty ugly, but you can obviously pick nicer colors. So now when we click on it, um, this is where the implicit animation is kind of handy it'll animate the color of our slider automatically for us. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and in the one I prepared earlier, um, it's fairly similar. Um, but I also set, we can also set the shadow um, color and opacity. Um, so in this one here, um, we've got it so um, they've got a nice shadow that even um, becomes stronger as you click on it. Um, so this is an example of using all Apple's latest um, graphics technologies for creating custom controls. So we've got our, it's based around CA layers, they're nice and efficient. We have our efficient NS images to be nice and small and shared across all of them. Um, because it's composite on the graphics hard, nothing's being redrawn when it moved around. Um, so especially if you wanted to animate these sliders, you could, it'd be all nice and smooth. So you, you can, as you can kind of tell, there's lots of different things you gotta understand to be able to make stuff like this. Um, you also have range checking on that as well. Yes, on this, um, this later version here, I have a little if statement here. 
um, to make sure it doesn't go off the edge. Um, so on, um, yeah, on this one here, I forgot that you can kind of drag the slider off the edge into nowhere. So there's lots of different things you have to consider and test um, when you're working on this stuff. Um, so in summary, um, what have we learned? Um, where do you even start with creating this stuff? The best thing to do is start by sketching on paper because once you start coding it, um, it quickly gets very complicated. So you have to have a really good idea of where you're going. Um, so I usually recommend it can be helpful to mock it up in Photoshop or your other favorite drawing program um, to get all your graphics right and play around with um, what it should look like and what different colors work together because um, it's much easier than doing it in code again. Then when you want to start coding it, think about what are the separate pieces that need to move around. So for example, with this slide it's fairly obvious. We've got a background and then we've got the moving thumb on top needs to move around. So having those in separate layers makes sense. So that way nothing has to be redrawn when the moving bit moves. Um, but in other examples it may not be so obvious. Um, then you want to think about what can be bitmaps and what can be um, coronation layer properties. So in this example I just used the NS image to draw bitmaps. Um, but often for simpler things you can get away with just using these layers um, themselves by setting the border, the shadow, using gradient layers. Um, and if you do that you, have to, you can avoid drawing completely. Um, and then think about event handling, so how to respond to these um, NS responder and URL responder methods um, to do all your maths and work out the user interaction. So that was a pretty quick um, introduction to some of the things you have to think about when you're building all these custom controls um, and some of Apple's latest direction. Any questions? Is it good? No questions? Good. That's it. Thank you very much.